dink, <laughs> this hand is clean. This hand is clean. You've got good eyes, but it feels like the movement is almost abbreviated. Then he's immediately changing that vertical rotation into a horizontal rotation <laughs> into a butterfly where his legs do both horizontal and vertical rotation, and then immediately changing that into an upward vertical rotation into the front stretch kick. So that whole run, there's a lot going on there. Hello, my name is Rebecca. I am a Wushu athlete, and this week's video is a discussion between me and former U.S. Wushunal, Wushunal, former U.S. Wushu national team member and internationally certified judge Brandon Sugiyama. A couple weeks ago, I performed at the Phoenix Wushu Nationals competition doing the international first compulsory Changshun routine. That is a mouthful. I also did this routine back in 2016, and this form was originally done by one of the greatest Wushu athletes of all time, Yuan Wenqing. I have been watching and re-watching my videos as well as Wen Wen Ching's form and trying to understand what's so different between each one. My depth of analysis on my own is about as complex as assigning an emoji character to each video. So I called in my friend Brandon to help me understand the differences between my 2016 performance, my 2021 performance, and one of the original performances by Yuan Wen Ching back in 1993. I think that understanding the differences between the forms helps tell a story both of how I've changed as an athlete in the last five years as well as how the sport has developed over the past three decades. I really enjoyed our conversation and hope that you enjoy it as well. Brandon, would you like to give yourself a brief introduction? Sure. Uh, thank you for having me. My name is Brandon Sugiyama. Um, I've been practicing Wushu since about 1994. I started when I was in college at the University of Oregon, and I learned Wushu from uh, a friend that I made in college named Dan Wu. Uh, he started the Oregon Wushu Club. The club is still going on to this day. We helped start the Collegiate Wushu Championship uh, when we were both still in school. Um, I went on to compete uh, for the US team in 1999 at the World Championships in Hong Kong. Um, I've trained in China a few times. I'm a certified judge. I have retired from Wushu. I have returned to Wushu. I've done internal, traditional, contemporary. So uh, yeah, I've been part of the sport as an athlete, judge, and also an instructor for the last 25, 26 years. Cool, cool. Um, and can you tell me a little bit what your experience was doing this form, the first compulsory? Okay, so since I started Wushu in 1994, this form was the, was the compulsory. And basically, for that era of Wushu, not just worldwide, but I would say specifically in the US, it was the Changchun form. Everyone did it. Every school did it. Um, individual forms were actually somewhat rare. Um, so even though I never competed with this form, I saw it all the time. So when I was practicing Wushu in class, uh, when I moved to the Bay Area, I started training at Pacific Wushu. I had trained with the Berkeley Wushu Club. Anybody doing Changshun, 90% of them were doing this form. When I went to competitions, this is the form. And then when I went to the World Championships in 99, everyone competing in Changshun did this form, both male and female athletes. Interesting. And do you happen to know like the history of why it was this form that was chosen? Uh, yeah, so when the IWF was trying to basically formalize international wushu competition, they wanted to create create a set of compulsory forms. The forms they chose were basic were based on the form of the champion at that time. Interesting. So at that time, Yuan Yuan Xing uh, was the was the champion, so it was his form. Same thing with. With Jianshu, Nanshan, you know, Nanshan was actually a female competitor. That became the Nanshan compulsory form, uh, except, you know, the 42 Tai Chi, that was a form that had been standardized before. But for all of the external forms, it was a competitor's form. That's super crazy. So it could have been someone else's form that everyone else had learned for all of that time as well. If there was a different champion during that time, yeah, it would have been someone else's form. So none of those forms were composed specifically to be a compulsory. So the second and the third compulsories, those were made by a committee or made by a coach that was given the assignment to compose the form, but this, but this era of compulsories was not. Interesting, interesting. 
Um, and can you uh, remind everyone like what is like the current relationship that most people have to this woman? Because I, I believe it's the B um, youth company. Right, well. right, right. So, you know, after, after 2001, which is when they introduced the second set of compulsories, basically this form and the first set of compulsories were kind of just pushed to the side. There was no real reason for you to continue doing this form that was no longer required for competition. I think some people still practice it just for nostalgia or it's like, I'm not going to compete at Worlds, so I'll just keep doing my old form. And then it really declined, like once you got to the third set of compulsories, once you switched to non-do and, and individual comp, uh, individually choreographed forms that started in like 2005, this form was just like, it was like, pack it up, put it in the garage, <laughs> in a dusty box. But it was kind of brought back into the international world of competition when the junior world championships became a thing. So you know, junior championships, there's A, B, and C. Those are uh, split up by age group. And this became the, the group B uh, form. Yeah. Interesting, interesting, cool. Cool. Um, thank you for all of that history information. I was only vaguely aware of, of most of it. Um, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, I figure somewhere that we can start is just like watching like from start to finish um, all of the forms um, yeah. and feel free to interrupt at any time. I think um, I'm most curious about like what's going on in your brain, what's what you see with your eyes. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen. I, do you have, I mean, do you have a preference if you want to share instead so then you can like control the pause and stop or try how it? About, how about for this first watching or first viewing, why don't you control it? <laughs> and then if we want to go back, I'll, I'll break some things down. I'll share from my end. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, cool. So Rebecca, at, at this time how long had you been doing wushu about a year and a half um i started the fall of the year prior okay and this is uwg so this is like november December, yeah okay. Got it. ah we're buffering how many other changshan forms had you learned before you learned this just the youth compulsory Okay. Did you like the youth compulsory? Uh, not really. I, I mean, it was super hard. Um, mm -hmm. And we didn't learn the whole thing. Like we stopped before the aerial. Um, it was just to like have some form to go through. Because at the time, so I, there were a couple other people who joined Columbia Wushu at the same time. And we were all like, oh, we have some past experience. We're just going to skip 32. We can like already, you know, <laughs> figure this out, which may or may not have been a good idea. Um, but we were given that as like a, a bit of a bigger challenge. Um, that was the intention. Got it. Were you excited to learn this form? Had you seen other club members do it? Or had you seen videos and you were like, I want to do that? No. <laughs> okay. Someone was just like, you're going to learn this form now. Yes, yes. Okay. And like at the time, like I didn't really understand like what is a wushu form. Um, it's just like, no. okay, we're going to go to competition now. Every, here's a bunch of wushu movements in a row. Now you memorize them. Um, I didn't, I didn't know anything. Yeah. And was this, I think I was judging, <laughs> may, I was judging at this event, but this might have been on a different carpet. I, I'm not, I can't remember which side I'm, I'm on. Is this the intermediate division? Yes, yes. I might have been on the other carpet. So how did you feel when you when you competed here? Uh, I think pretty good. Um, like, I, I had no idea what it was supposed to look like. But I know that I felt like I was doing like wushu, like we're gonna do some punches, we're gonna like do like some okay. movement. Um, and like, I think I even like from the very beginning with Columbia wushu, I just like absolutely loved to train and do wushu and like this is like the only wushu that i knew at the time um yeah. so i i felt good i felt happy and i think i also felt like proud of myself for just like getting through this form you know when i when i watch it a hard and, like, form 
<laughs> Tough one. I'm, I, after like the first, like the first half of section one is when I see like, oh, I'm tired at this point. Right. Yeah. And so like getting to the end of it's like, hey, like I, I actually made it to the end. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. I, I, I felt good, even if it wasn't excellent wushu. I, I didn't know the difference. I mean, you should feel good about it. I will say my first impression on this first on this viewing, even though I've seen this form before, the fact that you were an intermediate who had only been training in wushu for like a year, year and a half, is very impressive. Impressive that you learned the choreography, didn't make any major mistakes, uh, you got through the form and finished relatively strong. That's a huge accomplishment. Huge accomplishment. Just just there. Cool. Thanks. Other impressions, other like, um, like if I had come up, if you had seen this form and I came up to you after the competition and was like, hey, Brandon, like, what what you think? <laughs> okay, I think I would have stayed pretty positive knowing that you were a younger Wushu athlete and you were in the intermediate division. I think I would have said just that. Mm. How long have you been doing Wushu? Okay, impressive. They got through it. Nice job. And I think I probably would have just stressed, which is what I always say is like basics. Just focus more on your basics, building up um, like those body mechanics, like basics aren't just an exercise. It's just not the thing you have to do at the beginning of class before you do the fun stuff. Like basics are really, really important to build up those fundamentals, the movement patterns, the strength, flexibility, but also the proprioception and the feeling of the different parts of your body being connected. Mm -hmm. um, and that, only comes through like lots and lots of practice and lots and lots of repetition. So probably what I would have said to you, and then I would have congratulated you on a good performance. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, next one. Mm -hmm. So it's just a few weeks ago. Yes. How long had you been training uh, have, since you revisited this form? I started in July. July, okay. And training pretty regularly? Yeah. Okay. So how did you feel at this competition? Going into it and then after your performance? Um, pretty good. I think I was actually like way overhyped for this competition. Like I had been thinking about it and like, you know, I haven't competed in like a million years. Yeah. Um, and I think like my, like, I guess like excitement energy was like a little bit higher than it needed to be for just like getting through a form, like with as much like power and energy as it needed. And I think that shows like I'm jittery, um, and made a couple small mistakes throughout, um, a few little bobbles. Yeah, yeah. Tiny little bobble at the very beginning. Yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> the the judge said um, like it was like intermediate to like tell the other judges like what a uh, score wow. range to be in, and I was like, what's what's going on over there? So right, 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 right. Okay, like overall, overall strong performance. I, I told you this, I think, uh, online. I think it's a, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And if I had been judging this event, if I didn't know you, if I didn't know you and I was judging this event and you came up to me afterwards, I would have been very congratulatory. I would have said, oh yeah, really nice job. You know, this is an old school form props to you for for focusing on it and overall uh, all around a good performance with the exception of a few bobbles there was a little bit of a, a stutter at the beginning a little bit going into the empty stance and then kind of missing your hand at the end um, other than that no major like mistakes so a, a pretty clean performance good energy um, good expression um and over overall i would say a pretty good pacing that would be my like, first impression th thanks thanks i guess like what scale are you evaluating on though like um collegiate athlete versus like 
comparing it because I also saw so many you know what is it 12 to 14 year olds doing this form as well um is it that scale like or like all the way to like the Yuan and Qing scale um I, I would have been judging it on the scale of domestic U.S. competitors advanced adult that's what I would have been judging it on yeah I try not to compare youth to adults um I try not to compare people that are preparing for international competition or who are aspiring towards international competition because just that rule set is different. So I would, yeah, I would be thinking about this just in like adult advanced women competitors. Yeah. Oh, cool. And tell me more. I, I guess like, I feel like there's like other, um, like the well, negative side of things. Sorry? There's tons. There's tons. <laughs> Excellent. This is why we're so, here. So that would have been what I would have told you if I didn't know you. Right? <laughs> in 2016, I did not know you really. So if you would come up to me, that's what I would have said. Now that we know each other and I'm familiar with more familiar with your kind of wushu trajectory and and your competition experience and what your aspirations are. Um, would you want to start on the first form or start on this form? Oh, uh, does it make more sense if we start on the first form? Like, let's start on the first form. All right. <laughs> the first form. Okay. So now looking back at this, right, and feeling more comfortable with with giving you much more honest feedback, I would say what I'm seeing mostly here is um, a lot of disconnect. Right. Mm. Arm is moving. This hand is moving. This leg is moving, and they're just not connected. Uh, it feels very light, um, feels very, uh, this is going to sound harsh, it feels very empty. Mm. There's not a lot of substance behind the techniques. Um, it looks like you are, um, this is also going to sound bad and I apologize. It's kind of like you're faking your way through it. Mm. So you have some physical ability, you're able to remember choreography, you uh, have learned some basic wushu techniques. You have now learned this form that I would say is far too complex and advanced for where your skill level is, but you are doing a very good job of kind of hiding that mm -hmm. and. And this is actually a big compliment being able to put on a performance that almost hides some of that I think if someone was not too familiar with wushu they would look at this and be like wow that was really amazing that was great but i think for people that know wushu we would all look at this and be like yeah she's actually more like a beginner kind of getting through a very advanced form mm -hmm. and there's a lot of reasons for that the, the things i said there's a bit about the tempo there's a bit about your um where your intention is there's a lot about your lines of movement, where your momentum is going. Uh, but I think the main ones is disconnect of your different body parts, very, very light, um, not feeling very grounded, and also a, a lack of stability, both when you are static and also when you're moving. Hmm. Yeah. Does that any does that any of that make sense? Any of that feedback stand out as something like, I don't know what that means? I, I mean, like it would be. If you want to pull up examples, that'd be awesome. But I'm especially thinking about like, so like, I think the strongest or like most, uh, I, I start out much stronger. And I think like, as my energy decline, or like, my opinion, like declines is throughout. Um, but I definitely notice when I watch my opening movements, um, like the the power is kind of going in all sorts of swishy. Yes. Yes, yeah, that's it's what kind it's of like hand up here, block <laughs> over here, push over here. <laughs> so it's like you're executing the techniques, but just not really correctly. It's like you're placing something out there and you're placing this out there, but there's no force being generated. Um, the mechanics of where that palm is being pushed out or how a stance, how you're going into it is really, really lacking. And that's just because you don't have the experience at, at this point. You've only been doing wushu for a little over a year. So that's totally understandable. Yeah. Cool. cool. Mm -hmm. um, are there like combos or anything that you wanted to highlight from this form? Um, okay. So this form, as I think you agree, it's, 
it's very challenging, but I think it's challenging in, in many different ways. One way is physically, like that whole first first section <laughs> is like half of a form. It's ridiculously long. You go in one direction with a bunch of techniques, you go in this big run over here for a jump, and then you do this big combo in the corner, then you do another run to another run to the corner, and then that's like the first section. That's just ridiculous. Yeah. Very, very demanding, okay? Um, but then like the second and the third section, to me, the second and the third section is where you really can tell if someone knows what they're doing. <laughs> um, you know, like, it might seem like easier because it's the, the second and third section are less physically demanding, but there's a lot of details in what you're doing with your hands, what direction you're kicking, and you have to keep moving and you're cutting these diagonals going across the floor and your momentum is you're going high and low left and right and forward and i think that like we're moving on different planes and rotating on different planes is really really hard and um that's really very high level wushu skill to be able to pull off so um i think that's uh, those two runs for me are clear like yeah she's going across the floor but she's just kind of mimicking the, the, the motions and she is getting across the carpet but not very smoothly definitely definitely yeah i i see that as well i think especially like it I, the word that i would use is like very mushy like we're just kind of smushing our way across the floor lack of clarity right lack of clarity in the techniques mushy i think is is a is a good word i use that word when no one's listening, I try to never tell someone that their wushu is mushy, but in my head, I'm like, that person's wushu is mushy. <laughs> Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially the stance right here. I, that's, that's a mushy one. <laughs> it's a mushy one. It's a mushy one. But again, remember, you've only been doing wushu for a little over a year. So the fact that you can even get into that position, that's very difficult. Yeah. Cool. So. Mm -hmm. All right, shall we review the next one? Let's go to the second one. Now I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, as you're as we're watching this together, this is not just a critique of you, but this is kind of a critique in general of how I perceive current athletes are are performing this form, right? The, you and this current generation, especially the, the younger athletes um, who are aspiring to compete as that group B, they weren't around when this was the compulsory, right? So you, you weren't around when everybody was doing this form and when Yuan Yuanxing was on top and you saw these other Chinese athletes and, and different people from different countries doing this form. So I can't blame you or any other athlete for this, but I feel like most people are doing this with like new school flavor. And in my opinion, new school flavor, because it's been developed for new school rules is very, very different from how Wushu was done in the 90s under a different rule set. So it's a, to me, a lot of new Wushu is a little bit more like posturing or you're hitting a pose. I feel like a lot of the movements are done more lightly um uh what else would i say whereas when i think back to like 90s wushu and what i really liked about it for like really high level 90s wushu it felt like you wanted to be like a warrior on a horseback charging into battle and that feeling and that ferocity of like going down a hill into the face of your enemy and a wall of soldiers, that was the energy that you wanted to uh, express on the floor. And there was also a sense of like, you, were, you wanted to move almost like you were just almost out of control. And yet at the same time, be able to move in a way that showed you were a, uh, in complete control. And that, that um, contrast, of like being so wild that you're almost out of control and yet showing very clearly that no i'm in full control i loved that contrast that contrast for me is what i gets me really excited 
you watched, I think you were in some of those live streams I did when I was watching old school wushu. And it gets me excited because just that energy, that ferocity is there. I also make another comment. We were talking about um, momentum. We were talking about moving on different planes of movement as you do wushu across the floor. To me, good wushu should feel like you're on a roller coaster. Mm. And it's like continuous turning, rotating, you're going up, down, left, right, looping, that that feeling almost like you're snowboarding down a half pipe, you're skateboarding down a, a hill. Um, I think that's what old school wushu is about. And I think new school wushu is much more posing, posturing, playing it almost a little bit too careful very upright with techniques being executed lightly. Mm. Does that make any sense to you? Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, okay, let, let's, I was talking so much, let's play this. So I think like your expression, right? Your ferocity, you are trying to capture that 90s wushu. And I know you're, you're, you're training with Ding Wei, who that's his generation. So I see that coming out but there are still some moments that I feel like are posy. If you go back, that outside kick to the uh, yeah. hammer fist and the palm. Okay, if we use that as an example, right? You're hitting the kick well, that's a good kick. You've got good, um, uh, um, not uh, expansion here, right? Opening up, that's good. And you are hitting this last movement clean and there's snap, but when I see it, I'm seeing like a lot of momentum being lost. It's like mm. great kick and then losing momentum and then setting up uh, to create some contrast for the drama. And this last one, to me, there's very little payoff. It's like dink, <laughs> this hand is clean. This hand is clean. You've got good eyes, but it feels like the movement is almost abbreviated. The snappiness is only coming from the end and not from like, if you think about your body, your soft tissue and the ligaments as being like these rubber bands and you can compress them like a spring and then you can kick and punch and they, they snap out. If you think of like that kick bah, opening up, that's stretching the rubber bands. The rubber bands compress and they're a spring compress and then they open up and from the center of your body, these last two movements go bah, like exploding out. I think that's what's missing here. Individual techniques are good. It was a good kick. You're hitting this clean, but there's not that feeling of like, wah, 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 bah, that bigness of the movement. Yeah. Um, yeah, this next run, this is tough. This is tough to have your, it's like, you've done this big move, you've hit this uh, horse stance, which should be, a big moment in the form. And then how do you come out of that? You're like setting it up for drama. You're like, you know, starting slow. And then how do you get into this like move where you change directions, charge three strong steps to the corner and just like kick, wheeling arm, high, low, camera face, boom. Uh, this is a very, very difficult uh, little, not little, this difficult short run. Very, very hard to pull off. Um, I think you did a pretty good job of it. Um, there is a little bit of like your acceleration into the run is a little bit off again, like that feeling of like, if you're, uh, a skateboarder about to drop into the ramp or you're, you know, you're a snowboarder about to go down that hill, that feeling of like, set it up, set it up. And then go, 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 go. Ba, 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 ba. And then you don't stop until like empty stance. Mm. It's tough. It's really, really tough. And you, um, you did bobble a little bit in the empty stance. I think you, you talked about that move before, either in one of your videos or, or something. How do you feel about that combo, the stretch kick to the empty stance? <laughs> well, I mean, like I, so I, I think it's so much fun because it, when you do it right, it feels so good, right? Like yeah. getting like the, like the doing, 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 and then like being able to, um, I had like, when I was training that combo, I would always bobble on the empty stance and then bobble on my one foot up. So like only having one bobble here, I think is, is still a success for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I really enjoy it. 
um yeah. especially so like like Jingwei has me try to in the the tata um go all the way into gongbu um and i feel like mm. if i could just hit that clean you know and your weight's this way and then your weight's this way and then you're down like that would be mm. so cool but i it's it, it, not quite there so yeah yeah one um one tip on that whole combination and you know i know you have a coach i i'm i don't want to impose on any instruction you're getting from uh your other instructors but i will say one thing that i changed about how i do this form and to me it's helped me immensely is to put the left foot down before the empty stance oh. so um, what i mean by that and i'm not gonna um I'm not going to actually do this, but I think I have the room. So what you're doing and what most people do is they do their front stretch kick and then they come back, they put their leg up and then they go down. Right. This is how you're doing it. This is how most people do it. If you can pull it off, it looks amazing. Right. It looks incredible. It's so dynamic. It's also super hard. Right. Your weight from here is going back. You're on one leg and you're trying to go down. Right. So your weight is going back up down and if you do that you create this loop that's very hard to control right you've got this loop here so i think i might have stolen this from lu Qinghua. i feel like it was and if it's not here there's another athlete and instead of doing that do your kick come back stay high almost like you're standing and then go down mm. so if you do that then your momentum is linear right it's going back stopping going up stopping and going down rather than this big loop yeah, yeah. Da, 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 here and then down instead of da, 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 da. yeah this, this is a, a difficult place to stop it's true <laughs> yeah, it's hard it's really really hard um okay then this section was okay uh you're kind of missing that heel kick out it's it feels to me a little bit abbreviated um this is okay okay <clears throat> so then these next techniques to me again are kind of like new school right a year is kind of like you're you're hitting the move and you're kind of placing the elbow out there and you are hitting this pose but to me those three things those three strikes back fist elbow punch um are really lacking like where is it coming from where is that power coming this back fist should come come from your waist right turning bop. same thing here strike and then you're turning a rotational energy into a linear energy and same thing here scoop and then this should be like one hand coming back you're grabbing your opponent you're pulling them in and then you're punching them so that feeling of like bah, huh. one arm coming back one arm going out um to have more more substance be, behind each of these techniques um does that make sense to you that makes a lot of sense i think this one this part here after the i mean so like the side thrust kick is not so great either but like after that side thrust kick all the way to here um that part like i always it's almost as if like if, if it's like a phrase in another language and I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm just kind of guessing yeah. tones. Um, and I think like this, what ended up being in this one is kind of in between other things that I've seen. There are so many like very like polished, like- Totally, people do this combination very, very differently. There's no like single one right way. Like th this is the way I explain it and how I process it, but there are many other ways to do this. Yeah, no, but I, I like that more. I think like, um I, I think that when it's kind of trying when it's somewhere in between like trying to have that like you know pretty little snap things and also being very forceful it i i don't know it, it seems a little bit um confused to me so that's that's really helpful it's really helpful feedback cool cool uh then you know this this run that you're doing here this is also deceptively simple like you think it's simple and easy but there's actually a lot going on here Right, how to get those steps coordinating with what your upper body is doing, setting yourself up for that snap kick. And then also, how do you go from your snap kick to this chabu into the arc step? Um, it's tough, right? You're changing direction. You're going from a rotation going on a horizontal plane to a rotation going on a vertical plane. And how do you connect that rotation 
horizontal into the vertical plane, into the smash in the ground. Um, it's tough. I, I, when I was watching you do this, there's a little this a little disconnect. Once you do that snap kick of like, then going back, this feels like a little bit of a pose. Your weight's a little mm -hmm. bit high in the chabu, kind of up here, and then trying to then accelerate and go into the uh, arc step. Um, there's a there's a little bit of a disconnect there. For sure, for sure. I and now that you pointed out, I can see it better. I'm wondering what you think. Like, so, like, say if an athlete's like, "Oh, my my mabu gongbu isn't very good. I'm just going to train mabu gongbu." But like, if there's something like this concept of like, you know, yeah. you're going back and you're going forward, and then you got to like put your weight in like an arc step. Like, mm -hmm. is the way to train that to just do it more? Is there more to it? I oh yeah, you know, doing more wushu is always helpful, but I think. If you just do the combinations from your form, yeah, you'll get better at doing it that way. But I think, of course, we're 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 commenting. We are commenting on how you do this form. But that idea of being able to change your momentum for from a, hor a vertical rotation to a horizontal, back to a vertical, of being able to move across the floor as your intention and your techniques are moving in different directions. That's a wushu skill, mm. right? And if you build that wushu skill, then you can probably do that in different forms. So regardless of the choreography, or if somebody has uh, shows you a new move and says, hey, Rebecca, try this new combo. If you understand the principle, you'll be able to do it. If you only do this combination over and over, then you are only getting better at this combination. So I think there's um, it's like break it down into the component, right? Um, and practice on what that skill is. So part of that skill is like, you know, pubu chanzan, like you're looking back, you are blocking down, you're spearing out, and then you're going down, and then out of the pubu to the next chanzan, you're now going rotation vertically, but reverse. So then how do you go forward, having your front hand then go over your body. I'm still stepping that way, but this comes over, which follows with the block into the next spear palm. And then now, so that thing of like circle in one direction, but I'm going the other way, that turns into a block, extend, and then go in the other direction. That is basically the same skill that you, that you need to do this combination. Yeah. That is super helpful. I will do that now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, th think of like, there's wushu techniques and you want to break down that technique, but there's also like, it's almost like the skill behind the skill, right? The skill is like a punch, a pubu, a chonzon, a this, but then what do you need to do that? Okay, then it's like hip control, right? Um, solid footing, uh, understanding where my weight is centered over my feet. Uh, how my upper body is twisted and connected to my waist. That's like the skill before the skill, which I think is is as important or long term is actually more important than learning a jump inside kick and a back sweep and, uh, you know, those things. Yeah, that's exciting to me because I think that being able to see those skills and isolate those and train them I guess like we can if we have time at the end I would love to like kind of direct this into like okay like what the hell do I do with my training now but like being able to extract those wushu skills that make wushu look like wushu and then train them and then yeah. do them use them to do whatever wushu whether it be like a more um modern looking form or continuing to do forms that look like this um yeah. like that's like a, a goal or pathway that would make me like really happy as an athlete so that's really helpful yeah. to like Cool. Your, um that like skill extraction from mm -hmm. you yeah yeah it makes wushu more interesting to me absolutely absolutely cool all right almost done with this form last section rebecca you can do it Yeah. Also a tough ending coming out of that back sweep into the hammer fist is tough. So that's again, right? You're taking horizontal rotation, that back sweep. And at the end, you need to switch it to a vertical rotation. So you're going 
high, low, high, low, and then same thing on that empty stance there. Um, I know it always feels good to like bring that left leg up and kind of like tuck the toe back. But if you're worried about your balance, you can do the same thing as with this empty stance, come up high, you know, actually high here. And then down, and that way you're stopping your momentum going back, going up and going down. It's more linear mm. right, rather, than, rather than that loopy. Yeah. Doesn't look as impressive, but it, it's still correct. It's clean and you, you remain in more control. Mm -hmm. Again, yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure some people will be like, that's cheating, don't do that. <laughs> do the left leg up. I'm like, I'm old school now. No one can tell me what to do. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just depends on your goals, right? Like <laughs> if, that, if every point one counts to you, then like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think this too. Um, I mean, it's cheap to blame the carpet, but like it was, it was slippery. So, <laughs> I mean, green carpet is. Have you green carpet? This is an old school green wushu carpet. If you if you don't have experience on it, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. the, the The friction on it is very unique. It's very hard to prepare to compete on this if if you can't train on it regularly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's weird. Cool. Um, other closing thoughts? Um, I guess we, I mean, like, I think it would be interesting to kind of say like, okay, like what are like the main differences between like form A and form B, but I also do want to get to like, just like talking about like the Yonan Ching form and other things. Um, do you have a, a preference for um, conversation direction? Mm, I don't know. Let's, let's take a look at Yonan Ching. Let's, yeah, let's take a look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, arguably, like, you know, the greatest Wushu athlete of all time is the Michael Jordan of Wushu, the Prince of, of Wushu, um, you know, there's also different uh, Wushu camps. Uh, some people say that Zhao Changjun was the greatest of all time. Some people will say that Yuan Wenxing is the greatest of all time. Um, I can see all sides of the discussion. I tend to like Yuan Wenxing. But I also recognize that there's some things about his wushu that you could you could be critical of. You mm -hmm. could be critical of. There are some moments in this form that I that I feel he's not super clear on what's going on. This is all good. But like take for instance this punch combo coming up. This punch com combo coming up is so wild. It like what were what was he doing right? Mm -hmm. That block to block to punch punch. And then in, he does it so fast. And I bet if you kind of went frame by frame, it's messy. Mm -hmm. But that was also his style. You know, that was his style and he owned it. Um, and there were so many other things about his style that were incredible that I think you just kind of accept it. Like, oh, that's just how he did it, you know? Um, interesting, interesting. Do you like of this era, do you have a favorite athlete who does this form like that you prefer? <sighs> that is a good question. Um, uh, um, yeah, uh, there was a Korean athlete named Chande Park. Oh. He was on the Korean national team. Uh, he had a very interesting flavor uh specifically his broadsword but i think also his changshan had great flavor he had a slightly more compact frame but he was able to make himself look really big i liked him um who else did i like of this era uh from the female competitors there were a couple competitors from the vietnamese team that i think you know different body type obviously not a chinese athlete a much thinner frame, but the way that they did their form was very, very clean, very, very precise, very whippy, um, but still had that tempo of like, don't stop. Only stop long enough to show people you're in control and that you have stopped and then immediately get out of there, which I think is another thing that's different between this old school tempo and the new school tempo. The new school tempo, you will stop completely. Like your momentum is stopped. And then you like get ready for a move. Whereas the old school, when you stopped, it was almost like you were 
keeping yourself from falling off a ledge. And then all, all of a sudden you went, ah, and you fall the other way. And that mm. sense of like, you're almost going to fall over and then you keep going. Um, I love, I loved that. And I, tr I tried to express that in my wushu. Mm. I don't know if I was successful, but that's what I kind of aspired to. That's awesome. That's awesome. Cool. When I look at this form, one thing that I recognize is like a huge, well, so like the obvious difference is like this one takes a minute and 20 and mine <laughs> takes a minute and 40. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and so I guess I kind of think of it like, oh, like if we were all, say it's like a very simple thing, like we're all just like squatting. It's like, okay, well, I can squat, you know, X number of pounds. And here's Yuan Wenqing squatting like four times that. Yeah. Um, do you, I, I guess, like what other, I, I, how else would you describe like the difference between like what's going on athletically mm -hmm. um, between like me slash other, you know, uh, US adult advanced wushu athletes um and like this very different thing mm -hmm. i mean one just like the athleticism and conditioning like what 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 athletes of this era were able to do is just like mind-boggling it's mind-boggling like if you look at um one of my favorite wushu videos i think i shared it during one of my live streams it's that like 95 or 96 women's competition in changshan mm -hmm. and it's just like non-stop is that they don't ever hold a pose for more than like a second mm. and i think that that's really a big difference between old school wushu and new school wushu you just never rested mm. and so like the conditioning that the physical fitness that you had to be in to get through these forms the way that they did them it's not like oh i can do that form but it's like can you do that form like they did it that is very very tough that is very very tough you know of this era when people were competing with this form, you had to have your teammate on the side to let you know if you were under time. <laughs> people could be under time on this form. So I know you were just talking, it takes you a minute and 40 to do the form, but back then the goal was to be as close to 120 as possible. If you were over 130, you were perceived as, well, that's slow. <laughs> it looks slow. You're like, why are you, why are you, why are you resting? <laughs> you're hanging out over there in your drop stance like hit the drop stance and then get out of it yeah that was a very very big difference yeah that's super badass that's super badass um i want to do a quick time check i think i told you oh cool we still got wait did we start it we started at one yeah, oh started. i i meant for this to only take half an hour and we've taken oh, don't worry about it i don't have to meet with this other student for another hour so excellent let's keep going yeah, sure uh, um uh other i guess like um yeah i other other um skills that you can extract from this um that i can think of as like not like wushu basics but like wushu principles that make the sport mm -hmm. hard and good yeah okay so one i'll kind of revisit that idea of like this your form being like a roller coaster right and a roller coaster uh, once you start, right, a roller coaster, that first hill you climb on a roller coaster, right, that's the only, well, in old school roller coasters, that was the only mechanical piece of it. Once you hit the first peak, it was all momentum. Mm -hmm. So the uh, design of the track has to keep your momentum going, even if you're looping, even if you go up and down again. And so if you watch forms from this era, you'll notice there's just this kind of like continuous smooth line of movement like if you traced his hips or traced where his chest is going across the floor um, in 3d space i i would I, I think what you would see is this like continuous line even when you're changing direction you never went like straight back and straight forward there's a little bit of like back and up and then forward or back into the right and forward. So it was never like, eh, 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 eh. There was a bit of this curviness that created a sense of flow. Yeah. Um, and not, not just a flow in terms of like how your form is perceived by others, but I think also as an athlete, as being the person in control of your body and how you're doing that form, 
you're building that sense of like, where am I going? Where's my energy coming from? If you're too linear, like how do you create power? But if it's, if it's circular, then I can use my momentum going down. I can open up and use my hip to go in this direction. Um, you know, sometimes when you watch someone doing wushu, you're like, my God, like, how oh, that looks amazing. How are they so good? And I think those athletes have that sense of like, what are my hips doing? What are my shoulders? Doing? Am I, I'm closing my chest, I'm opening my back, I'm extending and I'm retracting, I'm pulling in with my hip. Um, that's what I think makes wushu really, really uh, beautiful, interesting, and also very, very challenging, mm. incredibly challenging. Mm. You know, even just that last run into his butterfly, you know, he's running in one direction, but he's turning his body, right? His arms are going linear, then they're going rotational, and it's starting, it changes from a over the top to an undercut, then he's immediately changing that vertical rotation into a horizontal rotation into a butterfly where his legs do both horizontal and vertical rotation, and then immediately changing that into an upward vertical rotation into the front stretch kick. So that whole run, there's a lot going on there. You know, there's a ton going on there. And how do you have all of those movements connected where you don't lose the momentum into this move? Yeah. And I think most people, when they do that, they're just kind of skipping. So they're kind of like losing their momentum because they're going up and down instead of forward. And they're just kind of like touching there. They're just, ah, and then they're thinking about, then I got to switch to my butterfly. And then and it's just like this disconnect of techniques that are going across the floor individually and not thinking of this. You have to keep this roller coaster connected. So is that, this, I know that's like, hard to i'm gonna hard. watch for it now right like now i have like the the bookmark star in my brain the next time i see wushu especially like older like non-stop for the non-do wushu um mm -hmm. i think that'll be an interesting uh uh way to train my wushu eyes mm -hmm. for sure yeah for sure for sure hmm i mean it makes me think too um so like Nowadays, um, when you are stopping to do your nandu or your kotoi pinghang or your, you know, stop in whichever pubu, it's you're deliberate. Like how <laughs> I, the, the, the thing that I'm grappling with is like, so I want to start putting together some forms that are interesting and that I like, um, and I feel like maybe it is very very difficult to encap like to capture this concept that we're talking about in a form that i'm doing um do you see it done sometimes um sometimes i mean you're talking about like how do you take this i these ideas and concepts and feeling but incorporate them into a structure of a modern competition form yeah. Well, so yeah, the modern competition form, right? Because the rules have changed, it doesn't um, it devalues this, and in fact, it kind of um, uh, penalizes you for it, right? Because if you try to keep it all flowy and and nonstop, you will most likely make a mistake in your kotwe ping hung. You'll probably make a mistake in your yeah any kind of long hold balance. You'll probably mess up one of your non do movements. So. The importance of that is why people stop is what you said. So I think the higher level athletes have figured this out, right? Your first two sections are just like nandu, set up, nandu, set up, nandu, oh, watch me now, kotwe, one, two, and now I've got that all out of the way. And now watch my third section, I'm gonna go blah, 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 nonstop, blah, 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 blah. And then my fourth section, butterfly, and then I'm done. Yeah. So then all the cool stuff that I think made wushu dynamic is compressed into the third section of your form. And I think that's how people are pulling it up. Yeah. Nowadays, it's like my favorite section of the form to watch 
in competition is the third section. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I can't fault any athlete for doing that because if you want to do on well competition, you have to understand the rules. You have to train to the rules and you need to choreograph your form and perform for the rules. So that's just the nature of, of the sport. If you want to compete by the international rules, you know, if, if you don't aspire to compete at team trials, you have no aspirations to compete at a tournament that uses those rules, by all means, don't. Mm. I mean, I would say for any young athletes that just love wushu, there's no reason to do this. Similarly, I'll take it back to my generation. As I said, in my generation, everybody did this form. Everybody. But a question, I actually used to hate this form. Because mm. I'm like, it's the same form. Why is everybody doing this form? And I would think, unless you're going to team trials, why would you limit yourself to a compulsory form, right? It's kind of <laughs> stupid. Like, why are you doing it? You don't have to do it. Do an individual form. If you can't do a jump inside the Mabu, don't. It's a dangerous move. Eight of my friends have blown out their knee. Don't do it. So just as today, people are like, I see the Chinese athletes and the, the U.S. team, so I have to do the same thing. No, you don't. You don't have to do that. Just as my generation didn't have to do this form unless you wanted to go to worlds or an international competition. So, yeah, I think it's kind of silly and ridiculous that um, athletes these days feel like they have, like, I have to do my jump outside this way. Like, no, you don't. You can do it the old way. You don't have to do that. You don't have to stop. You don't have to do all these other things unless you want to compete by the rules. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like, this is coming from an internationally certified judge. I'm telling people like, don't do it. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't, don't follow the rules. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's, this is super duper refreshing to hear. This is, I guess, kind of like, that's putting to words something that I have kind of like been grappling with and trying to figure out. But then like the big conundrum is like, okay, I'm going to do wushu as an athlete and I want to be serious. Oh, all of my other friends who are serious are over there doing this other thing, you know? And like, oh, if I wanna go to competition, um, maybe it's just me, maybe it's, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it, you lose the whole culture structure, um, you know, the, the feels of going to competition and preparing and like being in part of a lineup, you know? Yeah, and you wanna be in the division with the best athletes. Yeah. You know, I, I, uh, at this competition, I think you said you were the only competitor in your division all three events yeah everybody was in the other one yeah yeah so you know congratulations to you on your accomplishments you performed very very well you were focused you had this goal you did it but don't you miss that feeling of being in that ring with like 10 other competitors and being on the side and be like i'm the fifth competitor and like you're trying to not watch the first competitor you're on the side and you get those butterflies and you're like okay here it is and you go out there and you do it and you get your score and then you're on the side catching your breath and you see the next competitor like that that excitement it's not there if you're not in the big ring yeah you're reading my mind brandon <laughs> that's like exactly yeah, I, like because look, i've been there i've i've been there like i you know, I competed internationally. I went to team trials. I went to tons of regional tournaments, you know, then I retired then I returned. And it's like, I get it. I get it. I, I know, I know, I have a good idea of what you're going through because I've been there a bunch of times. And it's, yeah, it's like, you know, why are you doing Wushu? What do you love about Wushu? What keeps you excited? What motivates you? Um, and you have to balance out all of those things to continue to stay in the sport and um, not hate yourself. <laughs> yes, you know? exactly. <laughs> I mean, look, look, I'll tell you, there was a there was a period in my early competition, early competition career, where I almost hated myself because I was one of the people that chose to do the compulsories, and I chose Tai Chi. Right. So the 42 Tai Chi and Tai Chi sword, I have literally competed with those in competition over 30 times, the wow. same form with the exact same choreography, with the exact same timing, because that form has to be within five and six minutes. Uh -huh. So it's like I'm doing the same thing. And then I would see 
fellow competitors doing Chen style and doing individual forms or doing Sun style. And I'd look over them like, wow, that looks like so much fun. Sure would like to do that. I'm over here just doing my compulsory <laughs> form. I'm gonna do this form this time. One percent better than I did last time, <laughs> even though it's the same, you know, like same exact movements. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna make yeah, sure yeah. I'm coming in at five minutes and thirty seconds as I finish my form. Cool, and I look at my score. Okay, cool. Yeah, I did a maybe a little bit better. Um, but that's what I had to do to compete. I my goal was to compete internationally, so I had to like give up and all that other stuff. I had to just put it out of my mind and say. Mm -hmm. Yes, that would be fun, but if this is my goal, I need to focus. And then, you know, eventually when I came back to Wushu, I stopped doing the 42 and I started doing Chen style and individual forms. And now I think Wushu is a lot more interesting, but at that stage in my life, that was my goal. And because that was my goal, that's how I had to train. Mm. You know, was it right? Was it wrong? Was it better or worse? It doesn't, it's, there's no way to say that. That's what I, that was my choice. Yeah, well, I mean, good for you for, for knowing and going for it. That's like, mm -hmm. that's the way to be, I think, as a Wushu athlete. So it's cool. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> you sound exhausted. You're like, I thought this conversation was going to help, but now I'm more confused than I ever was before. Well, <laughs> I think it's validating. It's validating. So like, you know, people, to, to, it's validating for you to know that I can be serious about Wushu without saying that, like, okay, I'm, my goal is to win worlds or whatever, you know, I think sometimes when I'm like, oh, like, I'm serious about Wushu, people will be like, oh, so you're doing trials? And I'm like, ah, oh, I'm not really sure. And then they'll be like, oh, okay, so you're not really serious. Oh, but I am, I am serious. Oh, but you're doing trials? Like, you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't know. Do you, know you know what you could do, Rebecca? Oh, my God, I can't believe I'm saying this while you're recording this. You could just do the wushu form you want to, go to trials, end up getting like a 6.0 because you have no non-do, but you got out on the floor and did the form you want to do. <laughs> you know, Brandon, I've thought about this. You know, I, you know, like the- <laughs> You could do it, right? You could do it. And you know what? Here's what's funny. Maybe you get a really high B score. Maybe. Maybe you get a killer A score and a killer B score and your non-do is like, you know, 0.2 because you did a butterfly, but <laughs> but no one's going to stop you. Right. You could do it. So. You know, you know, I, I was thinking of like other, you know, forms like the the magic, like the super, super high goal bar of success. Like maybe you could say like winning worlds, you know, like winning worlds for me would be like, I'm going to go, I'm going to do like the most badass super coolest wushu form ever the judges are going to cry and they're going to be like that's why i love wushu that's beautiful and amazing um then they're going to take my a deductions they're going to give me my you know one point something of nandu um and then i go compete at pan ams because uh that's <laughs> right and you know yeah worlds is a stage that everyone wants to be on but the reality is only four american men and four american women go every other year and the chances of doing that are very slim, regardless of whether you're good, bad, what committed, passionate, but just by going to Worlds, you are now qualified possibly to go to Pan Ams, which can also be a really fun competition. I mean, Argentina, you get to go to Buenos Aires, and then you tacked on that trip with your friends going, yeah. you know, in, in the mountains. <laughs> like, those are good experiences too that are valuable and that, um keep you in the sport and keep you in the global community of wushu so you know yeah i think another way to go this one i i'm not expecting you to be as enthused about mm -hmm. um but i think i think that there is something about wushu that like people i i i don't know how to make okay like a question that comes up in like Instagram, internet, TikTok spaces is how do we make people understand and appreciate wushu, right? And like people, yes. we try everything, right? We try lightsabers and bikinis and Santa hats and like all of these other things. And I would love to have, I would just love to build, try to build a following of like me just doing wushu for wushu's sake and like see if I can make 
content that is high enough quality, like presented in a way that people can understand to like know and appreciate what Wushu is. Mm -hmm. um, like that's another dream. And I think like, you know, that could also be a way that I could structure my training is around around TikTok videos or like other short forms. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I don't know how I feel about that. You're right. Um, because here's the thing, I, I think the, the nature of those platforms that, is that those platforms reward a certain format of video. It, it rewards a certain type of, of performance. Mm -hmm. And I think that Wushu really good wushu maybe isn't going to perform well on those mm. on those platforms it'll perform okay but typically those videos have some sort of shock value so you got that you know the video of the two girls doing the dwellian and it's spear versus bare hand and yeah, that thing yeah. it looks crazy and that does well and then uh, you know you have the the chinese video it's like oh somebody walking down the street and they look back at the camera and like oh yeah chin style tai chi da, 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 da. and then they, they do their hair and they walk away like those videos do well it's like oh, that's wushu and i'm glad people are doing that i'm glad that people are having fun i'm glad people are watching those videos and enjoying it but is that this is that really wushu is that helping promote wushu um do the people that are watching it or do they even understand what they're looking at is you know i i kind of feel like to me the answer to those questions is mostly no but i also feel like you know wushu as a sport could be so much more popular and we just collectively as a community haven't done a good job of promoting it and sharing it with the world. So I think these platforms, what I see, even though if it might not be my taste, I think people need to keep trying different things and trying different types of performances. And even if it might be a little bit clickbaity, mm -hmm. get it in front of enough eyes. Cause you know, let's say a million people watch one of those videos. That's a million more people that saw wushu than than watched before and if only 0.01 percent of those people end up googling where can i learn wushu mm -hmm. that's like a thousand more people that might try wushu than before and that's a good thing yeah right because out of the thousand people that google it maybe 10 percent actually try wushu once and maybe only one person sticks with it that's one more person than we had before. Mm. And if you do that over and over and over with multiple videos over many years, eventually you will have thousands, tens of thousands more people trying the sport. So that's good. Mm. Yeah. What's on your mind? You're very pensive right now. <laughs> oh, I guess like my thought is that like I just you know I I wonder though if like <laughs> this is like like dream world Rebecca potentially beyond like my physical capabilities of what I can accomplish before I'm too old. But like mm -hmm. if I could embody some of like what makes wushu magical for like you and like me and like other people who like really deeply love it if my wushu can embody that and we put that on the internet just as it is rather than like the version of wushu that like you know like the nowadays competition version which there already is a lot of on the internet and it does okay um you know i i just wonder if like <laughs> if we put more like wushu heart in it that maybe it will be more attractive to people <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> I think it depends on execution, depends on a lot of things. I would, I would say maybe, and I think people have to try it to see if it works. But I think also I don't have a lot of faith in it. Mm. Why? Like think about all the TikTok videos of people like dancing. Yeah. <laughs> right? And yeah. let's be honest, many of those people aren't good dancers. 
Mm. Uh, they've got an outfit on. They've got a a a, a, um, a really catchy song. There's three of them, and they're in the kitchen <laughs> doing their dance while they're baking a muffin. And that video gets tons of clicks, and people are like, "Oh my God, they're such good dancers!" And I bet any dancer will look at it and be like, These "People are fucking terrible." Yeah. But it's catchy. It looks appealing it's funny or they're wearing a nice outfit or the guy has nice hair so that gets a lot of clicks but that doesn't mean the dancing was good that doesn't mean that's growing the art of dancing um in some ways god now i'm contradicting myself in some ways what that's teaching people is hey you know what i don't have to be a good dancer to get a lot of clicks on my dance videos yeah, and this is this is one warning that I, I I have tried to tell wushu athletes, but I I I I'm also hesitant to say it. I think I've said it during wushu at home, during some of our talks afterwards. Is like, if your goal is to be a good wushu athlete, don't confuse likes on Instagram to you doing good wushu. It can inspire you, right? It can keep you excited. It keeps it fun. You're doing what you love and you're sharing with people. But likes on Instagram do not mean you're going to make the US team. Likes on Instagram does not mean you aren't going to get deducted at competition. Likes on Instagram do not mean you have good wushu. And if you if you start conflating going down that path and almost like, you know, you're getting the benefit, you're getting the attention that maybe perhaps you are craving but without actually achieving the goal that you want then you kind of get might get sucked into doing this type of wushu that gets you that gratification and it keeps you actually it's pulling you away from your goal so i think there's a little bit of a danger there yeah does that make sense absolutely yeah absolutely absolutely so cool thank you yeah this is fun you know you know me i'm a big wushu nerd so any chance i get to like geek out and talk wushu theory i love talking about like the theory and the concepts and like ideas about what's good and bad i love comparing old wushu and new wushu um because i think you know there aren't a lot of opportunities for people to talk like this maybe you talk mm -hmm. after a competition um but you know in that short little one minute that i have with a competitor at a at a tournament who comes up for feedback i can only give them a little bit and i have to be very intentional on like what am i i want to give them something that helps them but also doesn't confuse them mm -hmm. but i think sometimes these like really long talks you know how many coaches are talking about like that idea of like momentum and lines of movement and how to change rotation because it doesn't fit into the time frame of a class hmm. you know a lot of this comp of these talks were like oh well, you know when we went out to dinner with my coach on a weekend and you've got that long meal around a Chinese table and you're drinking tea or beer or baijiu and you just start talking those to me was like I learned so much around those those meals because you could talk like this and a coach could share with you what their philosophy was mm -hmm. you know so cool yeah we should have more like fireside chats about wushu <laughs> I would love that. I yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, um, I'm, sure, I'm sure there are other. You know, you're just hearing my perspective. There are so many other experienced athletes or former athletes and coaches, and I'm sure they have their own insight, their own bag that's filled with these nuggets of mm -hmm. information that um, I think they would love to share. And there's just not a format for them to share. Yeah, cool. Make more videos with other people. We'll do. You know, this should be the first of many videos that you do with other people. Absolutely. I will make more videos. I will do more Pupu Chan Zhang. Um, <laughs> and I will keep you updated with, uh, I guess, like, you know, I'm I'm figuring out what my wushu path will be, and I'm sure you'll see it. We'll, we'll communicate about it at some point. Um, yeah, so 
thank you again. I really enjoyed this. I'm going to review this probably many times. Um, uh, and yeah, um, good luck with all of your teaching classes and everything um, and your the life that you're living. I guess that's your new home. New home. Yeah. Awesome. New home. Good for you. All right. Well, thank you so much, Brandon. Um, and I will see you next time. <laughs> Thanks, Rebecca. Thanks for inviting me. This was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Bye.